the next agency of pollination that is animals and since it, the agency is animal the type of pollination is called as zoophily so pollination which takes place by animals will be termed as zoophily there are different groups of animals which are involved in pollen as pollinating agents we will study different examples beetles flies butterflies wasps ants these are all certain you know a group of animals which are mainly involved in pol uh, they are mainly involved as pollinating agents apart from that you will also find that there are certain animals like lemurs basically they are primates right so these primates even they are involved in pollination then you can find certain reptiles like the gecko lizard or you can say the sorry not or garden uh, garden lizard which are involved as the pollinating agents then you can say certain arboreal animals like rodents arboreals are those which are dwelling on the trees so arboreal animals like rodents they are also involved in pollination so these are the groups of certain organisms or you can say animals which are involved in pollination and as a result these pollinating mechanism is called as zoophily out of all these animals present or uh, grouped here insects are the group of organisms which are mainly involved as the pollinating agents you can say that insects is, is the largest group of animals which are involved in pollination and specifically the pollination which is done by insects is termed as entomophily that means pollination by insects Okay. these are certain organ other animals which are basically involved in pollination but we are going to study the characteristics of those plants for examples of those plants and animals or insects which are acting as the pollinating agents now like we have studied in anemophily which was one of the abiotic agents wind we have studied that the flowers they do not require any kind of odor neither they require any kind of showy or bright colored like appearance right but here it will be completely opposite now since these insects or these animals they are the biotic agents they are to be attracted towards the flower or the plant as a result the flowers of the plants which are to be pollinated by insects should be showy or you can say they should be they should have bright colors so the flower should be either showy or it should be bright colored in case if the flower is not as that showy or bright colored then some other part of the plant should be brightly colored so that it can at least attract the insects you can consider here an example of bract in bougainvillea now in case of bougainvillea if you see the plant the bract has a very bright color this is the bract bract is a small reduced part of the leaf attached to the stem the bract is enlarged and on that is arranged the you know dull colored or you can say faded flower pieces so this is the flower and this is the bract in case of bean bougainvillea the bract will be brightly colored in case if the flower is not showy then any other part should be brightly colored there can be leaves which can play a role in attracting the plants there can be some other parts of the plant like the stem if they are brightly colored they can directly attract the insects for the pollination okay now the second important characteristic of that of the flowers which are to be pollinated by insects will be that the you know stamens or the anther the pollen should be sticky the pollen 
plants should be sticky. So wherever the insects or the animals they visit to the plant or the flowers, the pollen grains they should directly stick on the body of the animal or insect. And whenever they visit any other flower, the pollen will be delivered there. The third characteristic of insect pollinated flowers will be the flowers are conspicuous. That means they are grouped together. Example that you can consider is that of a sunflower. You will see sunflower. It has a capitulum type of the inflorescence. And here there will be grouping. So the inflorescence, the flowers, though they are small, they will be grouped together so that the insects get attracted towards itself. They will be small but they will be conspicuous. So that the insects from the far side, they can uh, see as if there is a huge flower present there. And the insects can visit there for pollination. Now, as I said that insects or animals, they are the biotic agents. They will visit the flower for a certain reason. Not as it is, they will roam here and there. Or you can say they will visit the flower for no reason. So, the plant or the flower has to give certain rewards to the animal or the insect. So that they visit the plant quite frequently. So those will be termed as the floral rewards. Now, the floral rewards are none other than the pollen grains and the nectar. Right? There will be many plants which will be secreting the nectar. They have nectar glands. So that, is though, so that those nectar that is being secreted by the flower can be taken as a nutritive food by the insects. Okay, and whenever they come to take the nectar, the pollen grains can be delivered on the body of the insect. And there are certain plants in which you will see that the pollen grains, they are edible. Edible pollen grains. Example is that of your rose plant, rosa. You will see the scientific name is rosa, rosa species. The pollen grains are edible. So those edible pollen grains are high in nutrition. So the insects or the animals, they will come uh, uh, visit the plant or the flower to eat the pollen grain. And while they're eating, so certain pollen grains may stick to their body and they can transfer it later on to the female glass or the stigma. Now, one specific characteristic that we have talked is the plant should have bright color, right? Similarly, the flowers should also have odor. In case of anemophilus flower, we have studied that the flower should be odorless. But here, the flower should have specific odor or fragrance. So that the insects from a far distance get attracted to the smell of the flowers. Now, in this again, you can see different examples. Example of plants like jasmine you take. Jasmine is a plant which uh, basically blows or blooms at the night time. So, in those plants which bloom at the night, the color does not matter. Because if there is no light, there is no use of the color. So, instead, those flowers, they will have a very strong odor. You know, jasmine flower has a very good odor. Apart from that, you will also see an example. Not all flowers will have a very pleasant odor or fragrance. There are certain flowers which will have very foul odor. Okay? And to those foul odors only, the organisms get attracted. Examples is Rafflesia. It is a plant which basically releases foul odor. And that foul odor, generally, to the foul odor, insects like beetles and flies get attracted. So those flowers which are to be pollinated by either beetles or the flies, they are basically having foul odor. Otherwise, all the other plants, they will have a very pleasant odor. These are the characteristics of plants in which you should remember that. Again, one more point, the stigma also should be sticky. So that whenever the pollen grain lands on the stigma, it should be very you know, it should directly stick on the stigma and there should be no chances of falling down of the pollen from the stigma. One more thing is that whenever insects are involved in pollinating agents, mostly the flowers have a landing platform. And on that landing platform, what happens is 
the insect comes and lands and when it lands when it is sucking the nectar or when it is eating the pollen grains by that time the process of pollination can be accomplished apart from these there are certain examples which are very specific in their pollinating mechanisms one example is that of yucca moth and the yucca plant actually yucca is the name of the plant and the moth is because of it is uh, you know pollinating the yucca plant only it is termed as yucca moth the scientific name for the yucca moth is pronuba pronuba species which is mainly involved in you know pollinating the yucca plant now this relationship between the yucca moth and the yucca plant is a symbiotic relationship it is a mutual relationship wherein both are dependent on each other for the pollination as well as nutrition how now these yucca moth generally lays its egg within the ovary of the yucca plant so if this is the ovary of the yucca plant these moth is going to drill a hole within the ovary this will be the receptacle of the plant this is the ovary and after drilling this hole the yucca moth is going to lay its eggs within these locule of the ovary and this hole is being covered by the pollen grains of these yucca plant right the mouth of this hole is being covered by the pollen grains of the plant male flowers right so what happens these pollen grains they are indirectly landing on the ovary and here they will germinate for uh, and the male gamete reaches up to the female gamete which is present inside the ovary and the process of fertilization takes place another such example of mutual relationship is that between the wasp and the amorphophilus plant so basically in both these conditions you can say that the flower is providing safe place to lay the eggs okay so these are the different characteristics of the plants which have to be pollinated by insects and these type of pollinating mechanism is called as entomophily thank you